Hello, in this Visual Basic video, I am going to cover data types. So we have done variables before. If you haven't, feel free to go back to that video. Any questions, reach out and I will help you. Okay, so data types. This is a data type, integer, stores whole numbers. And it actually has a range. It's not an infinite amount. So the actual range is you can store up to four bytes in memory and to put that in more tangible form, it has a range between negative 2,147,483,648 and 2,147,483,648. So a large value, but still has limitations. What if we want to, I don't know, have a larger number than that? We can have a data type called a long. So if I do, and what I'll have to do is console dot write line. And I'll put a name like so. Now I'm going to create another one. You know what? Nah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm going to do dim. And I'm going to call this int var, the int variable. I'm going to call this long var. Let me copy this so this is everywhere that it needs to be. And it will be as long now. And if I do long var equals 8, do console.write line long var. And if we run it, we get 4 and 8. You know, they work, you know, just as they normally would. But let's put a value larger than what is acceptable in a regular integer. So if I put 2, 1, 4, 7, 4, 8, 3. So 4, 8, 3. 6, 4, 7 is the largest value. Let me print an 8. So just, you know, just 1 over. <laughs> it actually gives an error. It says constant expression not represented or in type integer it, it, the compile i mean the ide prevents you from doing it so that's you know a nice ide you know that's fine now the, and if i were to copy that paste it in here run it they both work but if i change this to an eight and i run it uh let me just run it as debug mode this works but this one will not because let me just try and run it it says there's an error because the IDE Visual Studio set, tells us that the value is too large. And, you know, same with going too small as well. Feel free to experiment with that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. My thinking, okay, these are integers. How do we, you know, do something to do with a, you know, a negative value? And there are a couple of different data types. There's decimal and there is double. So the difference is, Decimal just allows you to represent you know, more precision after the decimal point. But I'm going to have a link with this video that will cover all the data types, the exact amount of storage that is required in memory for that variable and the actual value range as well. So feel free to check that out. So if I create a double, and I call, uh, I call it double var as double and double var equals, I don't know, 4.5, for example. And if I do console dot right line, and I do double var, run it. We get 4.5, that's pretty cool. What if I change this to 4.5? What do you think will happen if I run it? it? We just get four. So that's something to bear in mind. If you try to assign a number with a decimal or a decimal number to a integer variable, it will truncate it. What that means is it will not round it. It will literally drop all of the digits after the decimal point to the right. So if it's 4.5, it will result in four. If it's 4.1, it will result in four. If it's 4.99999, it will result in four. So just bear that in mind. And I will cover, oh, I'll cover, three more major variables and all the others you can have a look at the link that I'll provide. So the next variable is going to be a character. I think you can guess what that does. So char var, sounds a bit silly. And the data type is char, but it's actually, you know, it stands for character. 
and chaba equals so if we put a like a single quotation mark and we assign a value of does that not work here? Um, there we go okay sorry double quotation mark so if i sign oh, we can sign like a letter for example and if we do console dot right line java and if i run it it prints out oh you could also put in free here and it still prints out free but the thing to bear in mind free here and let's just say if we assigned free over here, I'll just bring this back to the original large value. But if we assign free to an integer or a long variable, they will be different because a character free is you know from the ASCII table, so it'll represent a different value. And I feel uh, feel free to check out the ASCII table. I'll provide a link with that as well. And whereas the number will just be the number. The next variable I'm going to cover is strings and that allows you to basically bunch up a group of characters to represent a word for example so if I put dim string var as string string var equals double quotation mark and just put your string so if I put in hello world like so, and I do console dot right line string var, and if I run it, it prints out hello world. So string var, a string data is just a variable that is that stores multiple characters. You could just put you know one character in there like that. That's fine. It doesn't have to store more than one, but it allows you to store more than one. The final major one I'm going to cover is a boolean. So dim boolean var as boolean, also known as bools. So a boolean variable is something that either has, you know, a true or false value. You know, it's on or off, zero or one, that sort of stuff. And if I do boolean var equals true for example console dot right line boolean var run it prints out true by putting false it prints out false so it just allows it's great for flags or keeping track of stuff so maybe if you're keeping track if the, the user has loaded a file but you just want to know once they've loaded it maybe you send a signal but you don't care what it is a boolean variable is great for that because it's either you know, off or on, zero or one, false or true. That's it for data types. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next programming video.